Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. This time, you get to know the truth about the haunted piano. I left, I went to work, then I came home and went to bed. Everything was back to normal, just as I told myself it was. Music started playing again, that's when it hit me. This was not paranormal, it couldn't be, it was a cheap trick. Margaret must have programmed the piano to play itself. It was just a prank, a laugh at my expense. That's why the damn thing was free. I ran downstairs to solve the mystery once and for all. Like clockwork, as soon as my foot touched the bottom step, the piano stopped playing. I walked over to it, confident in my new theory. Upon opening it up and exploring all of it, I was surprised by what I saw. It was just a normal piano. Nothing extra was added in its creation to make it play on its own. My calmness was not calm anymore. I stared at the red wood and ivory keys before me and almost felt compelled to ask, What are you? Instead, I remained silent. This silence, however, was quickly interrupted by the sound of music as the piano began playing itself once again. I wanted to run, but fear kept me still. I watched the horror unfold. The keys were being pressed down hard, controlled by an unseen force. A hunting piece filled the room as pictures fell from the walls. The house began to shake around me. My eyes darted back and forth in fear. But then I noticed something outside. Standing at my window was a shadowy figure. I ran outside to escape the madness. All the while the song went on. The house continued to shake behind me. The dark figure was nowhere to be seen. Margaret has not rigged the piano to play on its own, but I was not losing my marbles either. This was something entirely different, something out of this world. All at once, the music stopped playing, and the world around me with it. No wind... No cars, no animals, and no people. Nothing. It was the middle of the night at this point. But where were the crickets, the frogs, or even the trees? Where was life outside my home? A little exploration revealed that I was truly by myself. Every living creature in the world had disappeared. What the hell was going on? Why was this happening? I returned home, hoping for answers, but instead, I saw an unsettling sight. It was so dark, I almost didn't see it. Standing completely still, next to the piano, was the same silhouette from my window. My body was shaking with fear, but the figure did not react. It was frozen like the rest of the world. The shadow was wearing a dark cloak one that covered its entire body. At its face was nothing but pure darkness. I studied the figure for a few more moments before a familiar sound filled the room. The piano song played, and in an instant, the world returned to life. I fell to the ground, but managed to escape, crawling out the front door and rushing over to my car. I got in and took off with no specific location in mind. Happy to be anywhere that was not my own home. I started weighing my options. Destroying the piano came to mind, but the risk outweighed the reward. It could just as easily backfire, angering whatever spirit was haunting its keys. Seeking help wasn't really an option either. The only person who might believe me was Margaret. That was it. Margaret. Maybe she would know what to do. It was late, but I didn't care. I drove over to her place. The dark figure was there, standing at her door. Before I could turn in the opposite direction, it grabbed me by the arm with its bony fingers. Its strength kept me anchored in place, and then it disappeared. I had no choice but to return home. I hesitantly stepped past the piano and walked up to my bedroom where I locked the door and fell into bed.
mentally exhausted. I would not have even a moment of peace. As the song started up again, the second my head hit the pillow. But I remained still, sick of the repetition. The banging on my bedroom door that followed, however, succeeded in freaking me out. I jumped out of bed and pushed my dresser to the door, and I hid under my sheet. The banging persisted, but I chose to instead focus on the song, allowing myself to properly listen to it for the first time. Surprisingly enough, it was beautiful. Dark? but beautiful. Its melody soothed me, relaxing me to the point that my eyes grew tired. I fell asleep and I had a dream. The dream world I found myself in was different. It was overwhelmingly vivid and real. Words like surreal and otherworldly just don't cut it. The awareness I had is also difficult to explain. I was completely aware of my surroundings in the sense that I could feel everything about them. I know that doesn't make much sense, but it's the only description I have to offer. The dream was in a forest. It was large, and at center, a large red tree stood tall. Every fiber of my being knew where I was. This was the blood tree, the precursor to my piano. As I admired the beauty of the blood tree, a person stepped out from behind. He did not speak. He simply pointed at the tree. This is when the piano leaked into my dream. The song played as glowing lines ran up and down the tree's bark. The man put his hand to the wood, motioning for me to do the same. And I did. It was an incredible sensation. My eyes were filled with visions, a glimpse into the blood tree's past. Its bark wasn't always red. Native habitats came up to the tree every year. They would slice their hands open and place them on the tree's trunk. Their blood then dripped to its base, representing the lifelines of their people. It also signified becoming one with nature, feeding the tree life from within. It was the anchor that kept their community together. This is where they gathered and enjoyed life. A place free from worry. A safe place. This was also where the natives buried their dead. After that, one of the elders would play a song. The same song my piano played every night. It was their song of death. When it was all over, a final offering of blood was taken from the fallen and painted on the blood tree, granting their spirit safe passage to the afterlife. When the vision stopped, my new friend released his hand from the bark and pulled out an unusual instrument. He began playing the song of death, but then stopped. He handed it to me and motioned for me to play instead. I wasn't sure what he was up to, but felt no need to deny his wishes. With little practice, I was able to get the hang of the instrument and play the song. As I played, the blood tree began wilting, its bark changing from red to black. My friend was ecstatic. For one reason or another, this is what he wanted. It wasn't until I woke up later in bed that the pieces of the puzzle clicked into place. Margaret's grandfather had taken away the native's headstone. He violated their connection to nature as well as with one another. The tree and its spirits had to be put to rest, and once and for all, there was only one way to do this. I can't explain how, but I knew I needed to play the song of death on the piano. The whole way through, without interruption. It was the only thing that would break the curse. I ran downstairs and put my plan into action. When my hands touched the keys, the house violently shook, knocking frames and furniture all over the place. I kept my composure. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the dark figure, standing at my window again. Still, I continued. I had an obligation to preserve, if not for the tree or its ghosts, then for myself. 
The nightmare had to end. They roamed around the room, sometimes next to me, other times breathing down my neck. I paid no attention on the outside, but my bones were shaking. I had come too far to lose my balance now. Just as the shadowy figure sat next to me at the piano, I struck the final note of the song. The madness around me stopped. I turned to the figure beside me, and it was the native from my dream. He threw me a thankful smile before vanishing. My work was done. Months have passed, and the piano remains in my living room, quieter than it's ever been before. I even play it from time to time. If there's one thing you can take away from my experience, it's to be mindful of